in all seriousness, uh, Bryson and Brenson are both fighting on the World Series of Fighting 9 card. Uh, that is coming up back here in Las Vegas, March 29th. Uh, the World Series of Fighting promotion has been on the road uh, the last few fights. They've been up in Canada, been out in Florida, uh, back here in Las Vegas. And, you know, l- let me start off here, here brothers. Uh, how excited are you? Bryson, we'll start with you. How, how excited are you for fighting here in Las Vegas on, on such a great stage like World Series of Fighting? Um, this is my first fight actually in Vegas, so it's, you know, it's really exciting. My family's coming up here. Um, all I want to do is just show my best. Absolutely. And, and, and what about you, Brenton? I mean, same question. You know, how exciting for you is it to be fighting here? And again, World Series of Fighting, NBC Sports. I mean, it's huge. Um, this will be my fourth fight with World Series of Fighting, and it's always awesome to fight on World Series of Fighting. Um, every time so far that I fought with them, they always took good, great care of me. They um they just uh want you to go out there and put out an exciting fight. They don't really care about the outcome. They just want an exciting fight, and that's what we came here to do. It's also exciting to be on the same card as my brother because usually when one of us is training, the other one's getting ready, the other one's fighting. So it's better to fight the same night and then have some vacation off together. Is Absolutely. this the first time you guys have fought on the same card? Yes. Yes. <laughs> has has that done a little something different towards training, the, you guys being prepared at the same time? Oh, yeah. It's awesome to be be preparing at the same time, doing being on the same schedule, all, and then having the vacation at the same time. So it's... It's, it's, a, it's actually got to be a really exciting time for Extreme Couture right now because there's quite a few guys on this card, and you're all preparing together. Right? Yeah. There's a, it's, it's great for us, too, because we have an abundance of guys getting ready. We have an abundance of training partners. We've got Danny Davis. We've got Jimmy Jones. We've got Gil Guardo, and then us, too, and then we're going to go out there and do our thing on March 29th, World Series of Fighting 9. You know, it's got to kind of be a catch-22 also where you have your coach, Ray Zeffo, is also the president of the World Series of Fighting. So it's kind of like a little extra added pressure is you, you want to show be good for your coach, too, but you don't want to let him down when it comes to the, the fighting aspect. Oh, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say pressure. It's just kind of a little, I guess, a little more. Yeah, I guess you could call it pressure. But, um, I mean, a fight's a fight. We're not worried about it. Now, I was uh, curious, I, we was, I mentioned this off air, but I want to put this down for the fans so that they know. Who is the older brother of you two and who is the younger? I am, Bryson. Yeah. You're the older. How um, old are you? I'm 27. Okay, and I know that Brinson is 24 because that's actually listed on ShareDog. So, Brinson, you talked about wanting to be exciting. And, wow, that one, uh, let's see, I think it was World Series of Fighting 2 when you came out. You had that flying knee knockout. So, you, we know that you're capable of it. And, Bryson, you have a good share of knockouts also to your resume. So, uh, tell me a little bit about who you're fighting, Bryson. The guy, Sean Cantor. I Sean Cantor, I guess, um... From what I've seen, he's a local boy, and what I mean is, um, he's from Hawaii, uh-huh. <laughs> not local from Vegas. I don't know. If that's what we all say in Hawaii, local boy. Yeah. Right. Um, I guess from what I've seen, he's a, he's aggressive, and I guess we're gonna meet in the middle and slug it out. Now this is only his second pro fight, so being the experience that you have, and you're a former champion in Hawaii, so do you feel that that experience that you have and knowing what it's like to gun for a title and to hold on to it, that that gives you a, a, an advantage over him? Yeah, I, um, experience always gives you more of an advantage. But, um, I mean, everyone's dangerous nowadays. You know, everyone's well-rounded and can do everything. So it's just another fight for me. And, Brinson, let's talk about Butsare uh, Nefarios. He's actually a local boy in the terms of Las Vegas local. So I know he trains over at Sunset. And you fought a guy over from Sunset before in Josh Montalvo. So I was curious what your thoughts were on him. He's He's been around the uh, circuit a lot fighting amateur in Las Vegas before he went pro. It's good to um, have a, a game. I hope he's a game opponent. Um, from what I've seen, he, it looks like he'll meet me in the middle too. Um Kind of after that flying knee knockout, I'm kind of chasing guys around the ring lately, and uh, I'll be, I'm just excited to, for someone to meet me in the middle. Speaking of that, man, I hate to bring this up this way, but that last fight, I was so angry at the result. I was one of those people probably tweeting, robbery, robbery. <laughs> I mean, how, do you, did that, how did that settle in with you, and how do you get past uh, the Freddie Asuncao decision? They, a lot of people were very vocal that they thought you should have won. Um, I, 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 right after that fight, I just kind of just was in disbelief. I went in the back, I sat down, I, I didn't feel like I lost, but it doesn't uh, help my bank account. Um, it's kind of not the best terms when you get half to have to show up half to win. So 
I didn't really play to the judges. I thought I was I thought I was winning, and uh, my corner, my corner was in my corner was Brad Tavares and my brother Bryson Hansen, and um, I just go off what they say. They said keep doing what you're doing. You're winning the fight, and I just kept doing what I was doing, and I thought I would come out with the win, and um, I guess I just got hometown. Um, everybody that has anything to do with MMA that saw the fight thought I won, but the three people that mattered, the judges didn't think so, and uh, I learned the hard way that night. Yeah, we've seen that way too often is just the horrible decisions that, you know, come across in, in the sport. And granted, relatively, it is a new sport and we don't have judges trained the right way. But if you guys had an, an option of the way to train judges or a, a new way to score fights, would you would you make any was there any any suggestions that you'd have oh, requirements yeah. MMA experience yeah. exactly. like know what you're doing actually know what you're watching that. now uh, well do okay on the fl- flip side of that we see Ricardo Almeida you know a, a former fighter uh, now a judge in New Jersey but we're also seeing do you think there's a possibility of like favoritism and not saying towards fighters but towards a certain style say you have mm-hmm. a guy who who is strong at jiu jitsu do you think he would you know he's going to lean towards the grappler in the fight i think um you know being a fighter you watch so much fights that you kind of get the experience of being a judge and then um i don't think you should be able to i guess lean towards one style because um you know, it's you should have the experience enough to know what an MMA fight is supposed to be and how it's supposed to be judged. Good call, good call. Now, how how did the two of you get involved? I mean, in the sport. I mean, it's not very often we have a few brothers in the sport. You know, the Diaz's, the Lozans, the Millers. The, you know, the Shamrocks. What got you two into the game? Um, when I was about fourteen, our cousin uh, he fought in the UFC. Brandon Wolf. He has a team. We have a team back home and. Um, he was always our like uh, kind of our big brother figure. We always looked up to him, and then we just went to the gym with him one day, and that's history. We've been doing it ever since. That was it. Yeah, that's how it started, and that's where we, this is where we are today. This is kind of the the dream for me, Bryson Hansen. There's some young boys coming up too in our team back home, and um, Brad Tavares. We're all on the same team, and it's kind of like the it was we were supposed to move here to chase this. What, what was it that brought you here? I mean, what, was it I, I Brad? Was he here first? Did you guys come together? How, how did it come about? Um, it was actually always the plan, um, but Brad got that break on Ultimate Fighter, and um, things kind of just went into hyperdrive, and that's where we are. Here we are today. Now, Bryson, you actually were uh, part of the cast on the Ultimate Fighter season fourteen. You fought Marcus Brimage. Uh-huh. Uh, what was that experience like for you? Um, good. I kind of. Went in there thinking I was fighting at 35, but uh, mm-hmm. kind of turned out to be 45 for some reason. I don't know what happened there. It kind of got mixed up, but um, I mean it was fun. I didn't I didn't win, but uh, it was uh, definitely a good tell, experience. Tell them how you made the cut to 135, then they told you you're fighting 145 before oh. you stepped on the scale. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So I drank as much Pedialyte as I could, right. ate a little bit, and then I just got up to like 140. Wow, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Now, yeah, it was like- a bit. It was a big mess up. Wow, man, that's incredible. Yeah. Like, who would have known but unless you guys told us? But that's a great yeah. story to know. <laughs> wow. Hey, Those are horrible circumstances. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's seriously. ridiculous right there. I mean, wait, that's your ha- Wait, you have a guy, you're cutting weight, you cut down 10 pounds, and then, I mean, what was They're this like, when oh, you got we there? Had you, or? We had you on for 45, and he's yeah. like, <laughs> wow. So, but tell me, Bryson, also about, uh, I'd say, I think your last fight was about a year ago. Uh-huh. And I was just curious if there was some type of injury situation or did you just have problems finding a fight as to why um, you fought that? Finding a fight, just, I guess, being busy, or too busy on, like, everything else in my life. But now, you know, I put in my four months of training right now, so it's it's been a long time coming. Wow, that's a pretty good count. Speaking of busy, I mean, you you guys, you haven't been fighting too long. And like, you you know, you mentioned, Branson, you know, your your bank account didn't like the fact that you you didn't win that fight, even though you rightfully should have when you're getting paid to win. Um, Do you guys have other jobs? Do you work besides train? Um, Not currently, I don't. Um, We used to be in the industry here in Las Vegas just – Working at night, training all day, and um, it really takes a toll on your body, and it throws off your sleeping schedule, and it's not healthy. I wouldn't recommend it. And um, <laughs> we're, so we're just trying to just chase this dream right now. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a good a good way to go. I mean, it, it, you know, we've talked to so many fighters here on the the corner, and 
you'd be surprised. The ones that really go in full Monty for this, I mean, generally turn out the best. There's been a couple of occasions where, you know, guys having side jobs and then they've fallen into it. But uh, it's almost, it deserves your full attention. And and I want to wrap around to, to something you guys were talking about with the, the kind of ways that they score MMA fights and, and really score boxing fights in general. Do you guys think that it's about time with technology the way that it is to make judges accountable for the scores they put during the fights while you're fighting? And, and the way that I, I mean this is that while you're fighting, say at the end of round one, you get to look over to the side and see Judge A has you scored you know, 29-28, Judge B has it you know, 28-27, and you can see as it goes on where you know where you're being scored because i think this is you know it's interesting that this is the only sport now you know in modern professional sports that doesn't let you know who's winning or losing before the subjective end of the fight happens unless you end somebody i mean are you in you know in theory in favor of something like that that's a really good idea i never thought of it like that that'd be cool if they had the um, the judges pictures and the jumbotron and the score they put for each round underneath it so everyone holds them accountable and they know what they look like the judges are kind of like phantoms you you, you just see all oh, the judges scorecards you don't really know who That's the judges right. are yeah and, and i mean i think in boxing i mean i'm watching some boxing last night on nbc sports you know just you know catching a couple of fights and you know and i'm thinking to myself you know it, it's one of these days you know 2014 where all the technology in the world is available for you know for fight analysis uh, you know punch metrics what why don't we just show what the judges are scoring this fight as it goes on? So you, you give somebody, you know, they're, you know, in a later round, maybe they think, oh, I can take this round off because my corners told me I, I won, you know, five of the last six rounds. So I need to save myself here. Well, in, in a matter of fact, you, you were losing all those rounds. You had no idea of knowing, you know, and I think it might do something as well to kind of, you know, like you said, bring the judges from the shadows and bring them to the forefront. We get to see the officials in every other game. They're, they're right out there. Uh, and it's not the referee, the doctor basically in the ring, but the guys that are giving you your score. I, I would just love to see that. I, I think you're bringing up a really good point. And not only that is the fact of you might make fights more exciting towards the end. If yep. someone yeah, thinks that they're true. winning a fight, hey, the, the infamous Misha Tate, just Brian, coast. Just coast. <laughs> Just coast, you got it. I mean, that might not be a factor in the Absolutely. future. That would be really interesting if they did display judges' scorecards in between rounds and let fighters know, not just fans, you know, not just let the fans know who the judges are behind these calls. But let the fighters know. Yeah, absolutely. If we can see it at home, why shouldn't the actual combatants be able to know where they stand? So, you know, again, you're like, wow, I'm three rounds behind. I better go out there and ratchet it up. So, yeah. I don't know. Just a little food for thought. If the Nevada State Athletic Commission UFC is listening, you know, do what you want with it. It's just a suggestion. All right, we're going to step away. Take a break here on the MMA Fight Corner. When we